I think you're mostly going to be watching this recorded, which seems to be uh, the way these uh, sessions are working out. So this is a session organised by Chittislow Tlangothlan, which is mostly run by the town council. And uh, Chittislow is all about communities. I think, I think it started in Italy and it's about communities working together and sharing their expertise and their skills and their knowledge and doing things together. So this evening is very topical in that it's about uh, homes <coughs> and energy. So the session is recorded. So if you don't want to be seen or heard, if you can turn your microphone off and uh, your, your camera off and uh, you won't get recorded. So we got three things happening tonight and hopefully a bit of a question and answer. So Friends of the Earth Langothan have been doing a uh, thermal imaging project to find out where we're losing heat from our houses, which uh, obviously in the current climate costs a lot and uh, is looking set to cost about double uh, as soon as the prices go up and the price cap disappears. And uh, after that, you may have seen all the new solar panels up at Dinaspran, if you've been up there on top of the leisure centre and on top of uh, the main part of the school. Uh, Jamie's going to tell us about that project. And uh, afterwards, I'm going to do a little bit just sharing what grant aid is available and what advice is available through the government in Wales to help with uh, keeping your homes warmer and uh, run through that and at the end of that if anyone has got any questions then uh, I or other people are in the group will try and answer your questions so I don't expect to be here for more than an hour probably less so first up we've got Catherine and Marcus from Friends of the Earth Langothan. Thanks Peter um, and thanks for inviting us to talk a bit about the Heat Seekers project it's a great opportunity. Um, so I'm Catherine. Um, I'm a volunteer with Friends of the Earth and Gotham and uh, Marcus is also on the call as well. So um, we Hello. might do a bit of a double act. There's Marcus. There he is. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's also Warren's on the project, but um, he's not making it tonight. So just to give a bit of context um, and um, to the whole Heat Seekers project, um, we're just talking about the evidence of climate change, which has been in the media a fair amount in the last few months. So the scientific um, consensus, the IPCC or the Inter Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, their 2014 report, um, they peer reviewed 13,950 climate articles between 1991 and 2012, and only 24 of those um, rejected global warming and now 195 governments have accepted and approved that summary so the evidence is is there so some of that other evidence levels of carbon dioxide over the last 800,000 years there have been obviously ups and downs but it's never been higher than um, 300 parts per million of um, atmospheric carbon dioxide but in 2020 it reached um, 412 and 0.5 parts per million so alongside the carbon dioxide levels going up, the global average temperature has also increased um, and is now more than one degree warmer than it was before widespread industrialisation. And that's according to the World Meteorological Organisation. In the last 22 years have seen some of the 20, 20th of the warmest years on record, with 2015 to 2018 being in the top four. Obviously, one degree doesn't sound like a lot, but it's leading to rising ocean temperatures and sea, le sea level rise and all these extreme climate events such as flooding, wildfires, drought, and obviously that resu is resulting in death, destruction and food insecurity. So what, what's everybody doing about this? Obviously, there's international um, act action at the international level. So in 2018, the IPCC report said if we're going to have a chance of keeping global warming to one and a half degrees um, to avoid a climate crisis. We need to cut global emissions by 50% by 2030. And then we've got another 20 years until 2050 to reach um, zero net emissions. And in COP26 at Glasgow last November, they declared that they wanted to keep this one and a half degree um, limit alive. 
So that's at the international level. Coming down to the UK, um, so the UK greenhouse emissions, this um, graph just shows the domestic emissions. Um, it doesn't include those from aviation, shipping or imported goods. Um, carbon dioxide counts for 80% of the total UK greenhouse gas emissions in 2019. And they did in 2019, they had lowered by 44% than they were in 1990. So that was a positive decrease. And that's mainly due to reducing the amount of coal being used for electricity generation. Um, and UK emissions also did fall by 13% in 2020, and that was due to the lockdowns for COVID. That was probably just a temporary fall, but hopefully we've learned some lessons from COVID um, that we can take forward into, the, into a climate crisis. So UK policy, uh, the government has um, planned or pledged to cut greenhouse gas emissions um, by 2050 or to net zero by 2050 and reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 78% by 2035 and that's of 90, uh, 1990 levels. And last October they brought out the net zero strategy and that outlines how the UK will deliver on its net zero emissions and it's called Build Back Greener. OK, so through that, they're hoping there'll be a green industrial revolution. There'll be investment and lots of jobs associated with that. So just um, obviously I mentioned carbon neutral net zero gets mentioned a lot. So just to define that, it's basically adding no net carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So the IPCC definition is um, carbon neutrality is achieved when anthropogenic CO2 emissions are balanced globally by anthropogenic CO2 removals. So this um, infographic is quite sh clear. It shows on the left hand side, you've got where the carbon's being emitted. So from energy, households, travel, um, and then on the right hand side, you've got um, how we can take or well, reduce carbon dioxide and offset carbon dioxide by using renewable energy, reducing energy use, um, obviously um, adding trees to absorb it. OK, so then right down to the scale of Denbyshire County Council. So they declared a climate and an ecological emergency um, in 2019. They've developed plans to become a net carbon zero and ecologically positive council by 2030 and in October 2020 they actually changed their constitution so tackling climate change and ecological change is a guiding principle in its decision making process so that's quite a big um, commitment from them and then on an individual level um, we have our carbon footprint so a carbon footprint is a measure of the amount of greenhouse gases released into the atmosphere as a result of our activities so you can calculate your carbon footprint of anything individuals organizations products countries or whatever so i can forward um, geeky zero or the wwf carbon calculator if anyone wants to calculate theirs so the wwf one um, <laughs> looks at these four areas of travel, home, food and stuff. Um, so going on to that, how can everyone reduce their carbon footprint? Um, so Mark has found this excellent infographic, which uh, gives you some ideas. So in terms of travel, it's going car free, use an electric car, use public transport, obviously active travel, walk and cycle as well, reduce long haul flights. In terms of food, reduce food waste, reduce meat and dairy. And in terms of energy, switch to renewable energy tariff, install air or ground source heat pumps. And then in terms of your home is obviously try and increase its energy efficiency, um, switching to renewable, um, installing air solar panels and lots of other small things as well, which we'll look at in a minute. So all this has um, helped inform what um, yeah, the Heat Seekers project really. So we basically last year, last March, um, Friends of the Earth Clan Gosson applied for funding for the project um, and a thermal imaging camera and we used the Sustainable Development Fund which is from the Clewidian Range and D Valley AOMB and we were successful so which we were very pleased about and the AOMB purchased a FLIR E5 thermal imaging camera which you can see on the slide there a picture of it. Uh, September, um, Warren, myself and Marcus, um, we all set up the project and we signed up 16 willing volunteers and in October 10 of those people attended some online training on how to do thermal imaging and yeah, what it's all about 
and in November um, we did the first thermal imaging and we've done sort of five sessions I think since November. So the aims of the project are to train up the volunteers um, to thermal image hopefully 40 houses in Kangothlen. We've got um, I think for about 44 signed up so we're hoping to uh, reach our target of 40 um, and then we want to provide feedback to householders give them their thermal images and hopefully some recommendations on what they can do to stop the heat loss and we're we're thinking about running some sort of feedback session. We're not sure whether that's going to be in person or online at the moment. Um, and that will help in householders interpret their thermal images and give some advice on energy saving measures that they can help well, help reduce their fuel bills and then save energy and also reduce their carbon footprint. And hopefully that would bring householders together um, to find that they might have things in common in terms of they might have a similar house, similar issues with their houses. Um, they may live on the same estate or road, so they may have similar houses as, and, and uh, may have uh, needs similar energy saving um, or could join together to help save energy. So when do you have to do thermal imaging? So it's a bit, bit of a niche area. You can only do it between November and February because um, it's now it's getting too warm now in October to do it. You have to do it three to four hours after sunset because that allows any solar or any heat that's been on the buildings to dissipate. Um, it has to be cold, so less than five degrees ideally, and dry with um, low wind speeds. Um, and ideally um, no rain in the last sort of 24 hours. So it's quite... Um, quite a logistics um, because we have to look at the forecast and then obviously see if we've got the um, if some volunteers are available to actually come out and thermal image as well so we need to have it all that come together um, so there I am doing a bit of thermal imaging there so this is um, an example of a thermogram which is what we take with the camera so red is heat loss so have we got any um, any takers on where this particular house is losing heat Anybody want to? Looks like the front door is not very good and then yeah, yeah. heat yeah. from radiators upstairs. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. you can see the glass in the front door is very red and yeah, radiators on those external walls upstairs. Yeah, thank you. Likewise, um, now, so that's the same house on the left, but on the right, um, they've now done something so what where's the heat now being reduced on the one on the right where's the heat loss being reduced hmm. looks like they partly insulated the radiators but mm -hmm. it's not quite worked yes not quite. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bit of heat escaping so perhaps they haven't quite made them big enough but yes yep so they've put some radiator foil behind the radiator to reflect the heat back into the into the building and then um there's some heat loss here can anyone guess where that's coming from looks like the lean-to porch isn't uh, very well sealed to the house Yes, yep. And yes. then there's some loss around the window frames. Mm -hmm. Yep, you've got those two identified. So that's sometimes called a thermal bridge where perhaps two buildings um, haven't been connected properly. And what's the difference between the upstairs and the downstairs windows on this one? Ooh. That downstairs right one's awful by the look mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's not looking great. So. Possibly Maybe the, uh, it's an old single glazed unit or. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, so that's great. And a um, bit of a contrast of houses on this one. So the left one is obviously losing heat through their walls. But what might the one on the right have had installed? Well, it's got to be cavity wall insulation or internal insulation. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So as we've identified from there, um, houses leak heat all over the place. So this is a typical uninsulated house um, as well. UK does have one of the least efficient housing stock in Europe and um, 
they do leak a lot. So 25% could go out through the roof, 15% on drafts, 10% on windows, 35% on walls and 15% through the floor. But these these figures can be reduced. So has anyone got any suggestions on how we can reduce drafts coming from well, out of windows, doors, loft hatches, chimneys? So in the simple stuff we've done at home, um, draft proofing something I spent a lot of time on last winter to the extent that I ended up putting uh, some forced air in because it was uh, mm -hmm. not enough of a draft, which is a bit weird, <laughs> yes, but yeah, uh, yes, controlling the draft. Need, yeah. You do need some ventilation important. in your house. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the roof the standards now, what, 270 mil of insulation? Excellent. Which probably Excellent. not many people have got that. Loft hatches you mentioned. We've got two in our house. One I've replaced with one that's up to the green building standard, Excellent. which is about six inches of Kingspan type insulation and uh, very tightly sealed. And another one is just a, a piece of wood with a bit of polystyrene on it, which isn't very good. No, not so. ideal, but better than nothing. Yeah, so lots of ideas there. And if you've got any chimneys that you're not using, obviously um, that aren't in use, they can be drafty. So you can get something called a chimney balloon to pop up there, or you can use pillows or something just to try and uh, reduce any drafts from there. So that's great. So that's drafts. As Peter's mentioned, the roof, if you've got, yeah, maximum, well, 300 millimetres of loft insulation is, is um, yeah, the top top amount of insulation to stop um, heat escaping there. And what sorts of things can you do with walls? Well, we've already mentioned cavity wall insulation. Mm -hmm. and, yes, uh, yep. So if you've got cavities, yep, you can uh, insulate. Um, if you haven't, obviously you've got the option of internal, but obviously you lose a bit of space in your house or external insulation, or you can, um, be clad yeah with insulating materials I suppose on the inside or the outside and Ooh, when oh. John has got his hand up there sorry Catherine you might right. have a question you there yeah, John um it's knowing what to do in terms of insulation because you read of something like cavity wall insulation causing damp so mm -hmm. it, it's very it's very difficult to know how to approach it effectively uh, without costing an arm and a leg. Mm -hmm. It is difficult but yeah because if you've got an old building you, they need they need to be able to breathe and yeah you can't totally insulate every well yeah you need it does need some ventilation but I'm, I'm not an expert on insulation. But, uh, <laughs> well I appreciate that but that that's my conundrum really. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't a clue what to do uh, mm -hmm. and have uh, from what I can understand, there are problems can can be created. <clears throat> Half of my house is sort of nineteenth uh, century. The other one's twentieth uh, century, <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, and it's a funny shape. So, uh, and and for example, when I <clears throat> I had a new boiler some time back, and I was offered um, uh, and they were going to send somebody along to see what needs doing <clears throat> and they turned up and it obviously wasn't going to be an easy job so they said oh we can't do anything about this and just went away so mm. it, okay well after the talk about Dennis Brown we want to have a bit of a question and answer session oh, sorry. and also sorry. I want to signpost uh, the Welsh Government Advice Service Okay, so uh, I know all buildings are tricky because I've been trying to work out what to do with one at the minute so uh, <laughs> So we'll come back to that mm -hmm. later sure. on, John. Excellent. Thanks, Thank Peter. You. That's great. So that's um, the walls, uh, windows. Obviously, we mentioned double glazing. You can obviously get um, sort of just simple glazing, just single secondary glazing um, as a cheaper alternative. And then there's things like um, putting a jacket on your hot water tank, um, closing your curtains, making sure you've got thick curtains um, and turning your thermostat down. So I was reading that just turning your thermostat down by one degree can save over £100 over the year. Um, but that may be 
a lot more now depending on the new energy bills so switching off radiators in rooms that you're not using also having thermostatic controls on radiators so that you can adjust them to what what's needed there so lots of smaller smaller things and the radiator foil um, a, a smaller things you can do just to help reduce the heat loss so oh so here's a few of this diagram is quite useful it tells you what the um, cost recovery is and how much you could save. Um, I'm not sure quite how old this diagram is, but so you've got the replacing your old boiler, hot water tank insulation, loft insulation, energy efficient light bulbs, but also new double glazing, heating controls, draft proofing. So yeah, your draft proofing, Peter, should um, you should get a cost recovery within three years. So it might or might be quicker than that, depending. Yeah, well, it didn't cost much more than that, I don't think. So, no. uh, so uh, that's some of the reductions. And then other ones, yeah, is retrofitting, switch to a renewable energy provider. Uh, smart smart meters also, they would help, you know, then you could actually see where your energy is going, how, how much electricity and gas you're using to help perhaps um, adjust your behaviour and uh, make sure you switch things off. So the project so far, um, we've thermal imaged 32 properties. Um, so that's some households and even Peter's shop as well. So I think that's on the list. Um, and we're, well, we need to meet and discuss and we're hopefully going to create the feedback reports for everybody and discuss how we're going to create a, some sort of feedback event um for everybody so that's um that is the project so uh, marcus have you got any anything else you'd like to add no i think you've done a brilliant job here <laughs> <laughs> thank you okay thanks very much catherine so um is is the list full is one question that people who see this might ask um we could probably still do some more, depending on weather conditions. <laughs> We're hoping. Okay. We've, I think we've got eight more to do, which are round and about. That yeah, um, um, we're going to be doing a thermal imaging cycle, I think, <laughs> to uh, capture those. So we need to get those done. But I have had, yeah, a new request popped in last week. So certainly, if in in central Clangothan, it's a lot easier for us to mm -hmm. to do those. So yes, if if you want to. There's still a possibility. So if they if people look for the Friends of the Earth Langostan website, I think that's they'll be it. able to contact you through that. Yes, yeah, so there's a form to fill in there. Great. Um, right, thanks very much for that. What we're going to do um, is we'll do a bit of question and answer at the end of everything rather than after individual bits. Otherwise, we we'll probably will find things are dragging on. So, um, if one or both of you want to hang around, that's great. If you don't have time, otherwise I've got a fairly good idea of the project if we get any questions. So uh, so what I'd like to do, um, so thanks very much on that, is move on to Jamie. Jamie Roberts is uh, the business manager for Dinnersbran and a few other schools as well. Hi, Jamie. Yeah, hi everyone, you okay? So Jamie has come to talk about this uh, efficiency and uh, renewable energy scheme up at the school so we're ready when you are i don't know how good it'll be but, and i'm not very techy so uh just bear with me two seconds well, Gar gareth has got a copy of your powerpoint if it all fails and so okay. have i so just try and find it now then i've, I've got it in the background but uh, i've only bear with me two seconds uploading there we are. okay so I don't know if you can see that on full screen or was it small uh big enough for me to see certainly I think it's full screened you, you okay John as well yeah 
Okay then, so yeah, as John said, I'm the business manager, business and site manager for Askel Dinas Brand, but also uh, Askel Le Gwenant, Brincothlin, Carog, uh, Cadrewin and Corwin, and Brewer Dovedwy and, and Gwenant, and um, Canwyd rather. And anything we do at Dinas Brown, we share throughout those schools. So we work on a cluster basis. It was something Denbyshire brought in a few years ago. Um, so any non-teaching at Dinas Brown comes under me. And I tend to say that I kind of liaise with all the other primary schools for anything they're working on. Um, so I kind of hope that they can sort of tick along nicely. And then if they say, Jamie, do you know where we turn to for this? Can we do this? Can we do this? So all grounds maintenance, for example, all photocopying, all uh, IT providers, we tend to try and group together just to have efficiencies and uh, they can concentrate on teaching and I can kind of um, look after other things for them. So the big project of Dinas Brown, which we're quite proud of, it took years and years and years and years and years to uh, got, get off the ground. Um, if I'm honest, Wrexham were quite forward thinking uh, and years certainly ahead of Denbyshire, but um, Carbot, uh, sorry, the climate emergency and so on helped. So um, we spoke to Martin Smith, uh, who works for the team looking at energy improvements. And uh, it's this is his presentation that he did on our behalf. And this was pitched to every single child in Dinas Pran. The idea being not only did we want to improve the carbon uh, or reduce the carbon, we wanted to make them realise what we're trying to do and tell them all about the uh, green jobs. So we had various different people come in. And then, like all loathe, Boris Johnson. Um, Boris Johnson has mentioned it in Parliament. Uh, and it's just to get that exposure, really. We just wanted to not only do it here, but as I say, roll it out to the primary schools, which I'll talk about in a second. But it's very much, uh, we didn't want to do it silently. We wanted to encourage others. And I believe Prostatin and possibly a couple of the others are coming online. They, they've said, well, if it can work at Dean's Brand, let's try it. Um, so it's a bit of a boring um, presentation, if I'm honest, but it was a discussion point with the uh, the pupils. So you'll see it's slightly pitched at pupils, but some figures in there are quite interesting, really. So I say it's Martin, so I'll give him credit for that one. So um, basically pitch to the children. Um, you'll see some pictures in a second, but what's happened, why it happened, how it works, what does it mean to the pupils and what can they do as well? So has anyone noticed and the main one um, that if anyone's in Flangolstrom will have probably noticed is the Leisure Centre. It's a Denbyshire County Council building run by a company that's kind of an offshoot of Denbyshire, um, but it's on our site and it's Denbyshire's building. So uh, they were fine with us putting the solar panels on there. And those. So we've got 375 solar panels and uh, it's quite a large system. At the time, it was the biggest one in Denbyshire and then others copy and moving along. So I think Prostatins is bigger or will be bigger again. And then really boring things like these uh, valves in the classrooms. You can see the one in the uh, the red uh, in the corner. So we've had these uh, controls on some of the radiators, whether non tamper um, thermostats on the radiators or these uh, thermostats in the classrooms, depending on the, the system and the best thing for the room. Uh, 997 light fittings and the solar panels. And it's around 240,000 uh, pounds interest-free loan. Um, and it should pay for itself within eight years, um, which I'll explain in a second. Um, but solar alone wouldn't have paid it back quickly enough. So hence it was hand in hand with the heating, hand in hand with the LEDs as well. So I think the solar from what I was told was more like a 20 year payback. Um, so hence why we, we went big and we uh, did the whole thing together. So it's just touching on to the pupils why we're doing it. So I'll rush past that because you'll already know. Um, but these are some of the stats really. 358 tons of carbon. And back there, there was a bit of jargon in there that most people won't have uh, caught unless they've spoken to uh, okay. an up-to-date plumber. Um, emitters, but emitters. the rest of us, they're called radiators. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. So uh, I don't know why it's called them emitters, but basically any any heat source, whether it be what I call wet plumbing, or there could be wet plumbing with an electric fan uh, on there as well. Um, so some of them have got non-tamper um, valves on top, as I mentioned, but the pupils can't fiddle around with them. So we've decided, say, 20 degrees or 21 degrees in the uh, classroom. It's set to one, two, three, or four, depending on what level achieves that 21 degrees and then it's not touched. The teachers don't touch it, the pupils don't touch it. And then in some of the other rooms, like the box in the corner, that's on the thermostat and the teacher sets the, the room to that temperature. So whereas before we probably had about five to six zones in the whole school, we've got over 20 now. So whereas before, if you had a thermostat in one classroom and let's face it, 
Um, some people um, wear different clothes, some people um, like it hot, some like it cold, some feel the cold. Um, we couldn't do anything about it. It was a one pipe system and people used to fight the heating with opening the windows because we had no way of actually turning that heat off. So we're actually heating Klangotten um, because we just couldn't do anything about it. So there's, there's a huge saving on the heating alone. Uh, so yeah, those are the stats basically as to uh, how much electric, how much gas and uh, how much carbon we were emitting. We've not um, got rid of everything. It was very much seen as £240,000 uh, investment. Uh, I'll touch on it. It's around the 73 to 76 tonnes a year of carbon taken off and it's our base load. So it's the level at which uh, we still consume computers, air conditioning, um, everything that the site uses basically is, is what we wanted to do. And that would pay for itself within eight years. Um, but if we wanted to go carbon neutral, we're probably talking well in excess of a million pounds. And that's in, in part because we only run from eight till three mainly with pupils. We're only here Monday to Friday. Um, so we're not using an awful lot of electric at weekends and obviously at holidays and the summer being last week in July and the whole of August um, and battery technology is too expensive. So uh, it would be nice to go carbon neutral, but um, we, we, we've taken a percentage off. And he's just made a comparison that, yeah, we're using 358 tonnes and his house is 7.3 tonnes. And the lady earlier just mentioned about the uh, climate emergency. So Dean's brand, Dean's brand's not unique, um, but we very much um, are um, trying our best to, to um, well, we work with children all day long. And therefore, if we're not making these changes now, we're sort of, costing their future, but also we need to be the ones that push them down the green route, whether it be green uh, green studies, green jobs and so on. So um, it's not uh, in isolation. Um, some years ago, we as a school, and I'll clarify this, not catering, but we as a school went plastic free. So we stopped using polystyrene cups. Um, we, and I'll tell you about that if you were bored later. Um, and we just do things that, you know, we, we, we've just taken something like 75 metal cabinets from Shropshire Council because they were closing some of their buildings down. So we do try to buy um, pre-loved, should we say, uh, equipment, not always, um, but where we can buy or where we can use furniture within. We give furniture that we don't need to county and that might go to another school. And if somebody offers us something, we uh, we gladly take it as well. Uh, it's too small for me to read on here, really, but yeah. Energy savings, energy efficiency, renewables, lower emissions and so on on that one. And these are the motorised valves that I mentioned. Um, and it stops the heat, uh, the room heat overheating and obviously stops them opening the windows as well. And those are the rad valves that I mentioned earlier. And those are the old lights. So those are the sort of stats, really. You can see how much they used before and how much it's saving. And I think it touches on, there we are. That's for each and every light, how much it's saving. So the hall alone swapping over to LED is going to save us £879 per year in energy. And that just touches on how uh, solar panels work. And this is the interesting one really is to usages as to peaks and troughs it'll be weekends it'll be holidays and so on and this is where he's mentioning off-grid so that's where our consumption sorry our consumption and our uh, generation of solar has matched each other it'd be lovely to um be flat all of the time but in theory at weekends and holidays we should in theory go off-grid and is performing slightly better than they were expecting so i mentioned earlier uh some of the savings that's uh, some of the tonnage. It says 72.6. I think it's going to be slightly more than that. Um, the 29,700 was based on old electric prices, um, get electric and gas. And although they are fixed for a period of time when that ends, uh, and obviously we all know that the gas and electric prices have gone up, it's going to obviously save us even more again. It might even save us 40, 45,000. The downside of that is that we're not producing or saving all of our electric. So we save 45 maybe but the bit we're still using is going to cost us more, but it still shows it was worth doing. So it's not 
top secret, but he wanted to give us an idea really of, of where we are placed within. There's about seven high schools in Denbyshire, and that's where kind of where we're about. Um, some of the building is 1890s, which is the uh, Edwardian block, as we call it. Um, some of it's 1950s, 1980s, 1990s, 2000, 2010. Um, point I'm making is it's a, a really old building, really. And we brought ourselves in line with a brand, brand, brand spanking new building in real. So it just shows you we could just say it's not efficient. So what let's what can we do about it? Well, we've just brought ours in line with uh, with real. And that's in, in but for two reasons, really. Real would be efficient, but they've not put very much uh, solar um, production on there. So going forward, the government have said that any major extensions or new builds will uh, be carbon neutral. Um, Brink Arthur and Eskola are supposed to be having about 5.2 million soon, and those improvements will include solar. So those two schools within the cluster are going to be, um, yeah, improved. And then Broad Dove to be in Kenwood and uh, the one in Corwin, we're going to work on a project to put solar panels and make sure they're all LED uh, there as well. So it's, it's, it, I know this group's in Austin, but your three schools in Austin, hopefully within the next two to three years, will have major amounts of um, solar on them. And this was just for the kids to challenge the pupils, really. I think he's picked on, I don't know why he's done that. He's shown a male and a female, so just to cl clarify there, but if somebody's complaining they're cold and they're wearing next to nothing, wear a jumper. And those are the things, just talking about what the kids can do at home. So we had a green week um, and we talked about what, what they could do, put less water in the kettle, turn their lights, uh, lights off and so on and so on, uh, and changing little pups. We just wanted that message to get home really to um, pupils and their parents. Um, and those are the jobs that they could go into. So that's it, really. So uh, um, it's it's one part of what we're doing. What we're doing, doing. Um, and what we, we're next working on is trying to turn catering services into single use plastics and tins free. And it's um, I don't know who's on this one, so I've got to be careful what I say, but um, we're trying to come up with solutions that work. So at the moment, we're told that they'll lose too much money and also they can't um, afford the time to, to pour those drinks. So we're just looking at vens um, that are um, school compliant, um, that are COVID compliant, because we can't really have a, a, a bottle passed to the person and back again. So there are challenges, um, but we are getting ever closer. But uh, they're saying that if they were to stop selling single use um, drinks, um, the county council would lose 220,000 pounds so we're just looking at solutions, as I say, um, and we think we've got something to put forward, but uh, we are going to push and push and push. Um, Glen Clue would have gone single use free, but they banned drinks, which each to their own. Um, but we want to come up with uh, um, a choice with uh, compliant drinks in a reusable bottle. Um, and that's our biggie because um, it's disgusting how much um, plastic, although I will clarify ash waste take our waste away. And in 2019, Overall, they stopped 98.1% of waste going to landfill. Um, wow, wow. But yeah, it's huge. It is huge. And we are using the right one, but we're not really setting this, the, the message to the kids, really, which is obviously reduce, reuse, recycle. And we want to reduce in the first place. So we don't really want to push the point that they're um, stopping it from going landfill because we don't want to go in uh, being produced in the first place. That's me done, me. Right, right. Thank you very, Thank much, you very Jamie. much, Jamie. Okay. I hope it wasn't too boring. No, no, it's interesting. It's great to see what's going on locally. Hmm. Is anyone else getting an echo there? No? OK, cool. Um, right. I wanted to perhaps have a bit of a discussion at the end of it, but I wanted to look at uh, what is available in terms of grants, because obviously lots more people are going to struggle to afford heating um because of the price rises um, uh, as a business we've already been hit by i think our standing charges doubling and our energy costs have uh, doubled already because there's no cap um so if we can take the screen back from you jamie i just said that you can take it back i don't know if it's worked or not OK, um, I can still see it. Let me see. Is Gareth there or is he nipped out? No, I'm here, but I don't want to press. Oh, OK, I if I could grab the screen. OK. Um, Hi, Gareth. 
We're planting trees as well, aren't we, Gareth, hopefully? Yeah, you should be able to uh, take it over, it says, good. OK, I'm not quite sure how to do that. There must be a it's button. The arrow, it's by leave. There's an arrow pointing upwards. Oh, uh, hang on. Next door to your microphone. Share. Copy. Next door to the microphone. There. Ah, open share tray. Right. So, see if I can get to the right place and the right window. There. Right, can you see that? Yeah, this is the yeah. uh, Welsh Government Energy Saving Help website. It's called Nest Wales, I presume because we li all live in our nests and uh, they offer advice and support. And if you're eligible, eligible, sorry, um, my pronunciation always gets me on that one. There is support available. So quite a lot of people are in fuel poverty in Denbyshire, which means you spend more than 10 percent of your income uh, on fuel, heating, that kind of thing. And that opens up the door to grants to help. But before that, there's lots of advice on there. So if you just search for nest.gov.wales, there's lots of uh, help here. And it's about warm homes without it costing the earth to uh, use an overused phrase. So that is the place to go. Um, and that's all I wanted to say, really. So there is help out there for people who are suffering. There is help for people who are in rented accommodation as well. So if they are in fuel poverty or people have health issues, there is support for people in rented accommodation. And uh, even so, even if you don't own your own home, you can get help. Um, and if you're in council accommodation, Denbyshire are raising the standard of all homes that are council homes in Denbyshire to, I think, a B on the uh, their environmental score, which is pretty warm. We've done the most we can nearly. And we've just got our house to a high B. And it's not a particularly old house. So uh, B is good and warm. And uh, where we are, our solar panels actually until now have been bringing in as much money as we spend on gas and electricity. So uh, you can have quite a, a warm house for less money. And I always struggle with the amount they show the average bills as. Um, but yeah, they're all going up. So there you go, source of help. So if I can lose that thing, I'm not sure how to do that. There, that next to there. Right got people back can you hear me so it's quite a few people well there's not many people here now but those of you that have done things at home what's the easiest way you've found to make your house warmer it's one of the things i wanted to ask john have you managed to do anything at yours I tend to wear jumpers. Yeah, yeah, I do that. It's pretty hot here because my daughter's at home studying in the day and she turns the heating up. But uh, I wouldn't normally be in a T-shirt at home. Jamie, have you done anything to make your home warmer? Yeah, I'm in a 1892-ish house and um, cavity wall insulation and quite thick um, attic and all, well, 95% of them are LED lights. Cool. So what were the easiest things to do? Uh, well, basically, my mother uh, some years ago had had her house uh, cavity wall insulated, which sort of prompted a conversation with the, the people. And we were told that the house, my house on Abbey Road, one of the um, red brick ones. And the guy said, oh, no, because of the style of the brick, you can instantly tell that uh, it's not got a cavity. And that was the end of that one. Uh, and then some days later or weeks later, I spotted somebody on Abbey Road and I just said, uh, oh, I believe that these aren't cavities. He said, and he said, I'll come along. And he took his drill, popped it in and uh, put the camera in. He said, there's your cavity. Called the company back and said it is. And they did the whole house, including all the lofts um, for next to no money, maybe you know, less than 300, three, 400 pounds. So the point wow. I'm making really is even when somebody says it isn't, it's worth questioning. Um, and yeah, new windows within the last sort of three or four. So so. 
what I would say is we did have some insulation in there. It's going to sound well dodgy what I'm going to tell you now, but we had some because when we moved in, we um, put some down. And when the guy came, the cost was quite high. So I said, why, when my mother's cost next to nothing? He said, because you've got some. Had you not had any, then it's going to cost less. And basically, we came to an arrangement where the, the certain thickness and uh, meant the certain price. So um, we came to an arrangement, but uh, made a huge, huge difference. But to link into what John said, there's just one room where it used to have a chimney that was active in the bedroom um, that isn't um, used anymore. So that's the one room where it's slightly you can see a discoloration on the uh, on the wall. And that only happened really probably either when the can uh, cavity went in or the windows. But we've got really, really good windows and really good cavity. Um, so I've got to somehow get around that because um, I've put a, a, a real fireplace in that's not used to hope that it might allow the room to to breathe a little bit better. But um, OK, so that's a damp issue, is it? Yeah, well, it's humidity. Yeah. So if the humidity rises around 60, 65, it'll show some sort of pattern. Um, but if I was to blast the heating or don't know, it, it goes, it just completely disappears. So it's just a patch near the ceiling because they're really high mm -hmm. ceilings and uh, the, the, the so paint. That's, that's, is that room colder than the rest of the house? No, one of the warmer ones, really. Yeah. Okay. That's mm, awesome. I, I've not got. So, in, so when you thought there was no cavity, was that because you had the ends of bricks showing in the exterior brickwork? Because that's what. No, um, they some, something to do with, I don't know if, well, John knows my house. Um, about three foot away from the ground it kicks out so you've got a wall and a little detail of a slope and then there's the it's almost like a buttress and um the guy was just saying oh because of that i know it's not a uh, cavity um but it was just nonsense and it was the whole house was um cavity okay well good that you and it's much to do much, that. much 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 warmer yeah so john what you were saying you had trouble finding someone that would actually tell you how to insulate your house well i the, part of the deal with getting the new boiler was that uh, somebody would come round and look at it and tell me what to do but it was quite clear that they weren't going to be able to make quick profit out of it It'd be far too complicated so yeah. they didn't want to know about it <laughs> because yeah. in the old bit the, the, the walls are a meter thick mm -hmm. Uh, now, whether they're insulate, whether that insulates me or make it worse, I don't know, because <laughs> I can't imagine those being cavity walls. <clears throat> no, no, it, it's something we've been looking at because of work, how to insulate a building. And we've got some solid brick walls and we've got some stone walls that are a couple of feet thick. And it was would be how would we insulate those and then trying to find someone to do it. It seems to be, like you said, people want to do the easy jobs. But finding people to do the harder jobs when we've got so much older housing stock with solid walls is really difficult. So I, I see where you're coming from there. Uh, the the uh, the other thing was that I could, I, if I did it ex exterior insulation, I'd have to have the house re-rendered yeah. and all chopped off. And I don't really fancy doing that at all. <laughs> you know, no, I'd rather it's much it. more expensive, I think, to do external insulation. Well, yes, I guess so. Um, so I'm not sure, and, and part of it's flat roof, although it's there's insulation in the flat roof, how effective it is, I don't know. <clears throat> and it's a very low, very small um, attic, but I've put down uh, wool, sheep wool yeah. there. Mm -hmm. um, but one, one, there was an extension put on the side uh at some point so you can't over the bathroom you can't actually get to it <laughs> you know you can't right yeah we had this problem hole in the work wall. with different bits and pieces and uh, we ended up putting a full ceiling in the office at work which yeah. is out the back um so that's got well, i think a foot of insulation and i didn't check with dave but i expect it has uh but then again when we had the epc done for work because they can't access that they can't include it on the epc which is What's uh, an EPC? the environmental performance certificate. OK, so any business premises should have an environmental performance certificate. I imagine <coughs> Jamie's was very expensive for the school. No, maybe I've not. That one. We've, we've got like a carbon report um, thing that we get every now and it then. It might be because it's not let. Mm, I've not seen. Yeah. Know. 
So, so I hope you don't mind me jumping ever so quickly. Um, Dean no. Sprout done loads of other things, all of our, or any teaching space, I'd say, <coughs> other than the Edwardian block, you can swap the double glazing. The maths block, which is the four story, didn't have any insulation whatsoever. But when they um, put a new roof on, they put really, really thick king span. <coughs> The humanities block that I'm in now is having a new roof in the summer, so that equally they'll put insulation on it. So they are trying. I mean, it, yeah. As, so as you up change things, you're upgrading. Yeah, yeah. Which is probably the cheaper way to do it when there's a lot of works required mm. to make some of the changes. Yeah, and I hope you, you know, don't think I'm trying to trump, but um, it's a 5.8, 5.9 million pound business as yeah. in per year. It's 140 mm -hmm. plus staff, 1,100 pupils. Yeah. Yeah, in terms of its actual employment and people in one space, yeah, it's massive. Uh, it's massive. It is absolutely massive. So um, mm. if we're not doing it, then um, yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah, don't have any solutions for you, John. It's kind of. I did find at one stage a really good website for enthusiasts who had upgraded their houses, and there's things like warm wall battening and things like that. But there's so many considerations you have to make with solid walls. I think solid wall insulation tends to have to be breathable. And if you put Kingspan on the insides of the walls, you have to get them to check the dew point so that you don't get, I think, freezing within the walls or something. So, I think I'll probably just, I'm getting to the stage where I'm going to pop off with hypothermia. So I'll just do that and let somebody else sort it out afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> I, I did get a chance uh, going on one of the Friends of the Earth things with the camera to come inside my house and have a look um, because there are things that you can't see from outside so I could look up at the ceilings upstairs and see where the insulation hadn't got quite into the eaves enough and there were black spots and then went into the extension and I looked up and you could see a grid and it's a very tight roof so they put all the insulation in between the rafters rather than put some between the rafters and some across the rafters. So where the rafters were, loads of heat is escaping. Um, so it was really handy inside the building to see where stuff is going wrong. And I suppose if you insulate a house that's made up of lots of bits, you've got to look for cold spots because that's where the condensation is going to happen. So if you were going to insulate an old house, it'd probably be an incredibly useful tool because you don't want cold spots. You don't even want cold spots underneath your floors because that's where the the warm, moist air will go and condense just like it does. You know, we all get condensation in our window rebates because they don't tend to get insulated. I don't even know if building regs now requires it. But if you think how short a distance there is from the inside of the window frame to the outside of the wall, they're always going to be the coldest part of the house. So you're always going to get condensation there unless you insulate those rebates. Uh, but, you know, the bits I've done at home, obviously loft insulation makes a massive difference, cavity wall insulation does, but draft proofing. And I think Catherine's figure showed about maybe 15%. It might make a difference. I've seen people say it can halve the effect of your insulation if you've got drafts. It, it's interesting, you know, how much draft, do we need draft? I um, You need... You need to movement, otherwise you get yeah. condensation build up. Yeah. So when we have foot, you know, it's a small house. I think we're less than 80 square meters. When we have four adults in it during lockdown all day, every day. It was quite a fug and I bought a CO2 monitor for work to monitor the level of CO2. And in our bedroom at night, it was getting a really high CO2 level. Um, just because houses if you draft, you know, unless they're really drafty, your air doesn't change very much. So I put in forced air ventilation from the attic, which you very often get with flats because flats suffer terribly from damp because people dry their clothes and very often don't ventilate them enough. Um, so that pushes enough air through to keep it dry. So we still dry things in the house, but we don't get any buildup of damp because there is a certain amount pushing through. So you need some air exchange, definitely. Mm. Um, but to retrofit things, you know, your fancy airtight houses, they're all forced air ventilation and you'll take moist air from your kitchen and your bathroom, usually your wet areas 
take the heat out of it and pump it back into your living areas and your bedrooms. But that requires a lot of plumbing, and big pipes. You can't really retrofit that in an old house. Um, you can do single room versions, um, which are just drill a hole in the wall like an extractor. And they'll do a few minutes blowing air out and catch the heat and then blow it back in. So you can ventilate a room, but save 80, 90 percent of the heat. There's all sorts of options as you get more airtight to making sure you've got an airflow and getting rid of that moist air. But trying to get my head round work with a cellar and everything as well that we keep stocking I've it. I've definitely got drafts. I've got yeah. de I've definitely got an airflow. <laughs> I'm not home. We have very little. I've even gone round and tweaked and adjusted all the double glazing to minimise those. But I think if I didn't have the forced air, it would just be claustrophobic because of no air coming through at all almost. So it's difficult, isn't it? Draft proofing works, but you don't want those cold, damp areas because that's where you're going to get condensation. So I've yet to find anyone who would come and do. It, it's a big job in an old house, isn't it? You have to insulate everything because if you have a cold room, the warm air will find it and you'll get condensation. And you get rot under floorboards. We've got that in the shop. Got to change some joists because of damp. Hopefully the damp's now solved, but the joists are still rotten. So anyway, so that's just nice to have a bit of discussion about bits people have done and how effective they've been. So hopefully your house can get a bit warmer at some point, John. But I know it's a difficult I'm, thing I'm, with an I'm, old I'm building. I'm happy. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fine. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, I don't have the only place I have any heating upstairs is in the bathroom. Yeah. I don't bother mm -hmm. with the bedrooms. Yeah. It's just me staying in there, and I've got a duvet, and I'm, I'm fine. Me and the dog. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. We're all right. <laughs> um, yeah. But the bathroom is over the garage. And obviously uh -huh. the is cold. Right. So mm -hmm. whether I could sort of fit insulation in the roof of the garage or not, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, you should be able to. Might or be. even just on the roof of the garage if you've got space. No, I mean, it's part of the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, when, we, when we redid our kitchen, we had to replace the ceiling because the wiring going in. Uh -huh. So before that board went back up, we insulated all of that. That made a difference. Right. It's about sort of somebody that's got no idea what's going on and could get easily conned by yeah. somebody else <coughs> knowing what to do and where to start. Yeah, I think simple houses can be done very cheaply, but more yeah. complicated houses get very expensive. And, and the thing about solar panels, I could fit a few probably. Mm hmm. But where do I go to find out about it? You know, yeah, there's, there's, will there's advise me on it, for example. <clears throat> there's a few places that I've had recommendations from that people know what they're doing. Uh, I've been looking at them at work, maybe at the back, because we can't fit them on the front because it's listed. We still need planning permission at the back. But anywhere they're shading, it becomes difficult. So if a panel is shaded, the voltage drops. Yeah. And it can't work with the other panels. So you need somebody who knows what they're doing rather than yeah. someone that well, has I've, a, I've got a nice a, flat roof. I've got a, a sort of uh, a small um, roof, uh, uh, tiled roof, which is southwest facing, mm -hmm. which would be ideal. <clears throat> yeah. But it's getting somebody in to advise who do I get to advise me on what to do and what, what whether it's worth financially doing it. <clears throat> yep. Mm -hmm. Well, the, it's the return That's on right, it because right. there's no feed in tariffs now. So <clears throat> it's about saving you energy. So yeah. There's a few locally that seem OK, but uh -huh. uh, people who did ours, I think, are long gone. Right. <laughs> I, I think that uh, we'll wind it up there now. So nice Sorry, time. What time did you? Uh, well, I thought it was seven o'clock start. I'm sorry I was getting in. That's all right. Um, I thought it was seven o'clock start, it said on the Chitterslow Facebook. Yeah. So that's what I checked earlier this evening. 
the information I had before that was 6.45, but I thought it was me that was wrong. But Gareth thought it was 6.45. OK. So there's been a bit of confusion somewhere. It's all right. I'm just apologising, really. For no, no, being late. no, don't worry. So thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, Catherine and Marcus are still there, I think, in the background. So we'll say our goodbyes now. And uh, thanks very much for contributing. Thanks, and, Peter. Uh, yeah. And hopefully this will get out and a reasonable number of people will see it. So, uh, but it's good to have a bit of debate and discussion and see what other people are doing, uh, which I thought was quite exciting to see what happened at the school. And uh, mm -hmm. it's good that there's yeah. more coming in the smaller right. schools as well. Mm. And yes. uh, I know one of my staff there in a council house, I think that's going to get upgraded soon. Um, so it's all positive stuff. If anybody wants to have a wander around Edith's brand, it's always doors open if you want to just see what we've been doing. I think you should keep them shut. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Heat. Oh, they are. They're all on door closed with maglocks. Excellent. Right. Good night, everyone. Yeah, Thank you. Care.